It would not surprise me if you asked me why I stay. The world has changed so much since I first came to the monastery. Um, what people expect of us is very different in many places, especially those who don't know us very well. Uh, many people think that our time has passed. There's no place for us in the world anymore. After all, what are we contributing? How would I describe a monastery? A monastery, I think, is where the sisters can live in community and pray for the outside world. And so they kind of have our spiritual needs as their guide. And I guess they would be a family. But the family's purpose is to pray for themselves and, of course, all of us. And we certainly need it. People do think of a monastery as enclosed because the sisters are um, in enclosure where they're not really out in the public much but it's kind of a two-way door in that they do not necessarily venture out that much but we are always welcome for any prayer it just when you come in it's just it's just a safe place and very spiritual and you can just let the rest of it fall away <laughs> so it's very nice they came in September September, I, well, I know this because they came to Montana in September of 99 because my daughter was born in October of 99. So we always tease each other about their their Montana birthday is her birthday. <laughs> and so they've been here 19 years, 19 plus years. We come every Sunday with a, kind of a mixed bag of family and friends, but we've all become family. And my dad's 90th birthday was this week and father said something about it during mass. and. The nuns in the middle of mass just turned around and were so excited for him. And I, it's such a collegial feeling. So I guess that's what I can say. <laughs> um, in, in, the, in the work that I was doing, in the ministry I was doing, I, I was the principal of a school at that point uh, in, in an inner city school. Uh, I was always getting to the point where I was frustrated. I could only do so much to help. You're supposed to be teaching and leading a school. You can't do other, you know, you, you can't be out working with the people themselves every day. But I, 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 what I discerned is, is that by praying, I could reach more people. Uh, and my whole life could be dedicated to that prayer so that I, I didn't have to be always frustrated that I wasn't able to help enough. I ended up, you know, transferring to the Poor Clares in, uh, in South Carolina. And I found it just what I, what I was looking for. Uh, prayer is the center of, of our lives here. And that's, that's what I was looking for. Our, our good friend this morning, Mike, was, came and said that his, his daughter had died. Uh, it, it must be really hard for a parent to lose a child. But her, his daughter's a fully grown woman, but even so, it, it, it's just difficult. And, and, you know, everybody reached out to him. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's what we do, and it's what we're here for. It, uh, Most High God, your daughter Claire courageously left all to follow the gospel as founders of our order. Inspire many women to join us in carrying out her tradition of prayer and penance. For Mike and Joanne and for their daughter. For our country at this time, guide those who are leading. May, May we give glory to your name, Lord. Lord. Are you going to cry? Yeah, I know. <laughs> sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Depends on the moods. 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 Depends on the
Yeah, it depends on the onions. Have you made rosaries before? Mm -hmm. I was making rosary when I was aspirant and postulant. Those two years, I made rosaries and rosaries every day. With, with chains and everything? With like chains this? and this. Every day I could make a month, I will finish 50 rosaries. I was doing like this, but now oh. the, now I don't I don't know and I don't remember even anymore since I stopped it this long ago. These are small. Can you go to this? And they are pretty. Oh, I never thought about that this possibility. This will take five. You may have seen that that big urn we have in the chapel. We've got pages full of. Intentions, we've got the ones that come in the mail. Um, it's hard to guess how many are in there. I would say close to a thousand. But we're very much aware of it because this is different from anything else in the chapel. It's a beautiful piece and it's right here in the midst of us. So even whether it's time to to read this out loud so that we're all praying together for these people or whether we're simply coming in to pray by ourselves we are aware of this and all the people who are asking us to join them in, in their prayer well, i want the other people when yeah. they pronounce it yeah the other people to understand right that's that's important when mm -hmm. you're reading out loud So, where are we? Fresh from humiliation? Fresh from, yeah. Fresh from the humiliation we had suffered at Philippi, about which, you know, we drew courage from our God to preach his good tidings to you in the face of great opposition. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I was intended to breed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like. Who's this? Okay. This is my sister. Oh, and this is Joan. this you? No, this is uh, the sister from Songea. Okay. She make her first vow, mm -hmm. fan of solemn vow. Okay. So this is my sister, the nice last picture. born. Yeah. It's the last. She's the last last born in my family. Uh -huh. Joan. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Oh, let us go. Where are we? We see on the horizon here, at night if you look out there, you can just see the lights all across the, the horizon. And it's a constant reminder of the people who whether they know it or not, support us. It may not be my money, it may not even be by words of welcome, but simply by accepting us as part of their city. And in every one of these scenes, you can see the city in the background. You can see these buildings, it's a little bit different in every one of them, but the city is definitely there. It's almost as though the city was being viewed from all these different angles. As though it was an attempt to bring the whole city into the picture of Claire's life. So, here we are, 
This was painted near the end of the 13th century. So here we are at the beginning of the 21st century, and it's just as real and just as true as it was then. My name is Father Terry Regan. Uh, I was born and raised here in Great Falls, and so were my parents. My grandparents, on all four of my grandparents, came here when they were young people. And I'm now, how old am I? 77. And I've been ordained a priest for 50 years. So the sisters would ask me to come and say Mass sometimes. I remember especially that my mom was still living. She was in her 90s. And uh, so I used to go with my mom. So we kind of got to know them a little. And, you know, I like to paint watercolor. But I just never seemed to do it at home because the minute I'd step in my house, I'd feel like I, I was rushed or something. It just wasn't compatible with painting for me. And so one day I had this idea. I wonder if, if uh, they would let me paint in the uh, monastery. And so for a couple of years now, I've been paying on Monday and, thir uh, Monday and Wednesday, I have mass at seven in the morning. And uh, people come to the mass as well as the poor Claire's. And uh, then when mass is over, I go down to my little storage room and uh, it's not little, it's probably the, one of the biggest rooms here. In fact, that's it right there on that corner. And one of the neat things about painting in there is that uh, I wait for the sun. The sun isn't usually shining in the winter. Yeah, I mean, it's shining, but not on that particular place until, let's say, like 10 or 11 in the morning. And so it's always kind of a neat thing to uh, wait for the sun to come. And by then, I'm usually well into doing some kind of a painting. And so anyway, that's that's uh, what I do. I love being a poor Claire. Um, I love having time to pray. Um, being in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament is is healing and strengthening. Um, it's a relationship that's so important to me. So community to me is extremely important. Because we're the only monastery in the state, there just aren't places where people can come and just kind of be with the Lord and be with people whose life is wrapped up in the Lord. And people have made that first step and they've come here, whether it's for an open house or coming to mass or whatever it might be. And they're surprised that at home, they, they feel at home. And they come back and they come back and they become good friends because we're all seeking God together. I think we can say that my wife and I have friendships with these sisters. Um, we call them our own sisters. And they all are just so approachable and so um, a part of our lives, like, like our own family. And so I think if anyone wants to get to know them, wants to spend some time with them, they're going to really find that instead of a cold and, uh, and judging and um, critical eye, they're going to be having... Uh, just a welcoming eye and a, a happy eye and a, an eye that's happy to see them. You know, we, we in Montana have always um, been contemplatives. I think there's a tradition there. We may not call it contemplatives. We may just call it, you know, that we like to be in the presence of God and in the beauty of this state. As, as I drove back from Missoula last night and uh, as I drove over the mountains, the sun was setting behind my my uh, my back. and. You know, we saw this, the mountains, you know, in this, this snow-covered uh, scene with, with the sun's pink glow setting on the top of the mountains. And, and I think here in Montana, we are contemplative by nature. You can't live in this place without having a real firm understanding of God's presence and the beauty and, and the peace and the solitude. And when you come here and you pray with these sisters, 
it provides that sense of just you are part of a long history and you're part of a long future. Um, you know, I think it was Teilhard de Chardin that says, always trust in the slow present, slow working of God. Um, and you see that. It's been 20 years. And, um, you know, for a lot of businesses, 20 years is a long time. For a monastery in the tradition of St. Clair, it's just a very blink of an eye. <laughs> I look out at the fields here and I kind of realize, I don't know how, I don't know the details, but I am very comfortable that in generations from now, uh, there will be a community here, and that community will look out on the same landscape. I started to um, become more active in the monastery. It's probably been now about three to four years ago. They had advertised a Christian meditation class that they were teaching. Once a week I come out and we have uh, meditation on a Wednesday evening. And uh, it's very enjoyable. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's usually very small groups. Uh, sometimes it's only three of us or two of us, but it's always, uh, again, it's that peacefulness, that serenity. I'm not called uh, to the order at all, and it, it's just how that is. You know, most of us are not. That's not what our calling is. But I would certainly say that if people who have perhaps an idea that they might or they're not sure, to certainly come, because that is what, what they are about. And, of course, the very... You just don't know until you have an opportunity to talk. And um, the first thing to do would be to get in touch with them because, again, they're very, very open. They do want to have more sisters come and live here in the monastery. Definitely the beauty of Montana symbolizes, I think, monastery life. We built this. We were. It was suggested to us a number of years ago, like early 90s, when we build a monastery, open it, so that people are welcome and people you can share with people the gift you have. And we remember that when we designed. Um, we wanted this to be a welcoming place for everyone. I'd say ring the doorbell. Come, feel free to ring the doorbell. They will be welcome. Um, we're, we're a number of women who care about people. We aren't people to be afraid of. And I know some people are, or turned off by, by religious or by nuns, but, but there's no reason. When we saw this statue, a picture of the statue online, we said, this is us. We do a lot of hospitality, and we found that her holding the bowl with the loaves of bread was perfect. We feel that, that even that Claire with holding the, bread, the buns, to be able to share what we have with the people around us. This building was not just for us. It's for the people around us. God is far more present in this world than people think. And that there is a, a dialogue going on, whether they know it or not, between them and the circumstances of their lives and God caring for them. And we are a part of that because we care about the people among whom we live and radiating out from that to the whole world, to the whole church. And it's, it's a very strong, strong bond. It's a, it's a, it's a movement that's, that's always going on, even if they're not aware of it. And I, I think here we're, we're very conscious of that, partly because of all those people who have asked us to pray for them. And many of them share you know, very, very private, deep concerns. And it, we find it very touching that they trust us with those things. And we know that, that God is taking care of them. God never goes out of style. <laughs> Some people may think so, but 
the, the world is full of God and they don't know it. We wouldn't be here at all if it, if it weren't that God wants us here. Not just us in this community, but all of us. And there's, there's another level of, of life and goodness and love that's all around them. And we're glad that we can help them to find that. say things like flowers as long as you can mm. because we just don't have that many of them. I told my brother Brian one time, <clears throat> I said when a crocus appears in the yard in the spring, we put a little fence around it and genuflect every time we go by. <laughs> because you plant both and you don't know if they're going to last through the winter or not. And if one or two do, hooray. It's been hard to get used to, having grown up on the East Coast. Yeah. But we have mountains. <laughs> 